most of the people in this room will be spending a lot of time working to make money. And uh, it's kind of a curious thing because a lot of people don't spend that much time thinking about what creates value. And um, so for me, I'm trying to answer the question, what does the future of money look like? And uh, my hope today is to share with you a little bit of business in about 150 countries. Um, I'm not actually going to talk too much about my company, and I'm going to talk a little bit more um, about... So can we get my presentation? Oh, we're going backwards. Okay. So my company is called Blockchain, which frequently gets confused uh, with a core innovation many of you have heard about, possibly. And uh, Blockchain um, has been around since 2011, so we're actually an old company in uh, our industry, which is kind of crazy. But uh, as many of you know, things are moving quickly. So imagine a world with completely frictionless payments, a world where you can send a transaction from a fly fishing line uh, to a world of my company. In, in, in broadly, just sort of thinking about how we're going to build this, uh, this financial system. So I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit today about Bitcoin. Um, for those of you that have never heard about this, um, buckle up, it's kind of interesting. Bitcoin is a technology, it's a protocol, and it's a really big network. It's what's known as a transaction network. We actually use these every single day of our lives, whether it's Visa, PayPal, Amex, or MasterCard. Transaction networks have three properties that make them useful. So they have currencies, whether that's tokens or cash, uh, gold or pearls. Um, they have a ledger locked down. So uh, all these transaction systems have a ledger system, and uh, in those cases are all centralized. Um, the Bitcoin networks before, um, I'm going to try and explain it, but the best way to think about it is it's basically a spreadsheet in the sky, in the cloud. But instead of there being one copy of the blockchain, there are actually copies of it all over the world. They're distributed all over the planet. And uh, this is actually the largest distributed computing project on Earth. And what's really important is when an update happens to the blockchain, it happens simultaneously in all the locations. So basically, the entire network stores the transaction history for all time. And no one can reverse the transaction uh, once it's been recorded into the database. So to recap, Bitcoin is not a company. It's not proprietary. Um, and it's not bound by any jurisdiction or anything like that. It is a global and open payments platform. And it's based on peer-to-peer -peer technology, just like a lot of us use Skype today. It lets us make phone calls anywhere in the world using voice over IP. Bitcoin Network uses similar technology to settle and clear digital transactions. So if you've never seen this before, you should come find me after this presentation, and I'll set you up with a Bitcoin wallet. So anyone right now can go to the App Store on iOS or Android, download a free piece of software that in 30 seconds basically becomes a bank on your phone. So let that settle in for just a moment. Anyone on Earth with a smartphone can download open gold. It's filled with intrigue and drama and suspicion and many other things. But what's more important is probably the amount of legitimacy that's poured into this industry through human capital and financial capital over the last couple of years. So um, basically, it was started by a pseudonymous developer. They open sourced the project on GitHub, and many more people have contributed to this code base. And now there are tens of thousands of people that are writing and contributing to this open source project. Um, and in the last, uh, last year, I think we capped over a billion dollars of investment from venture capital firms and growth equity firms. It is the most invested tech vertical period. More than, vet, more than VR, more than social, more than anything else, uh, this is what people are betting on in the future. So the economics of the currency are actually pretty interesting, and I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, we were, I mentioned earlier that most people spend their lives in pursuit of money so they can facilitate choices and invest um, in things and raise their families. And it's kind of curious, um, money today is centrally controlled through the uh, central banking system, and they make lots of money print money out of thin air and then they lend it to other banks and through the fractional reserve banking system, an enormous amount of money gets created. Um, Bitcoin doesn't work like that at all. Uh, the way it works is the amount of currency is already known. It has a fixed amount um, and it gets released on a predictable scale, so the inflation schedule is known. So you can see it here on the chart. The amount of Bitcoins that comes into the economy year over year decreases over time. This is why it's been likened to digital gold. Um, so a couple things, the network is secured with cryptography, um, it's regulated by mathematics, so there's no committee, there's no politicians, there's no group of central people that decide what happens, all of the code is open source, it can be peer reviewed and anyone can contribute to it um, in the world. So let's think a little bit about money for a second. Um, 
Let's say you were a caveman and uh, you wanted to improve your life. So you get out of a cave and you build a house. Well, human beings have invented all kinds of things to optimize our world and uh, improve our living. And so if you wanted to invent a better form of money, what kind of properties would you want your money to have? Especially in the age of the internet, the digital age. Well, I submit you probably want your money to be uh, digitally secure. It should be impossible to counterfeit. So making more out of it, more and more of it shouldn't be possible. Um, it should be easy to divide and recombine. It should be fungible. One piece should look exactly like another piece. You should be able to send it anywhere in the world as easily as sending an email across borders. And uh, maybe you also want to be able to make tiny transactions. It's kind of annoying when you go shopping around here and you can't use your credit card for less than 10 pounds. Does anyone know why that is? You can't pay for something unless you spend a certain amount of money. That's because there are base fees and the merchant eats a transaction cost every single time you pay. That's silly. The fact that it's faster for me to FedEx this podium from here to New York than to send $1,000 today is just crazy. So the expectations of people are changing very quickly. Um, Bitcoin has all of these properties in it. And more importantly, it has a fixed and known supply. If there's a limited amount of something, then it's less valuable. Um, just it's the reason why we don't use air as a form of money or blades of grass or uh, anything else like uh, grains of sand. So where are we today? Um, there are about 200,000 transactions a day happening on the network. And I think if you're looking um, for evidence of how fast this is happening, um, you need to look at the number of transactions people are using. And uh, there are about $7 billion of funds uh, stored in the network today. So what, why is this a big deal? People are talking about this all around the world. There are books being written about it. There's a conversation happening in New York, in London, in Singapore, in China. And it is going to continue to capture people's imagination because for the first time in the history of the world, we've created digital scarcity. And when things are scarce and useful, they have value. So um, it is a borderless, frictionless payment system that anyone in the world can use, and it's the only payment system with zero counterparty risk. So what is the what are we talking about in terms of the overall scope of this? Well, there's $7.7 trillion in annual credit card payments. It's a pretty big market. There are a lot of people that don't have access to financial services. So uh, in the United States, 20.1% of US households are actually underbanked. It should be kind of a shocking statistic as the largest and wealthiest country in the world. And then you've got 2.5 billion people that have no access to financial services whatsoever. So what if the parents of two young Thai children actually had access to a more open, faster, and more affordable payment system than the hedge fund managers down in Canary Wharf. That gets pretty interesting. So that's what we're working on. Um, I want to take a little quick trip down memory lane. And most of us here remember uh, a company maybe called Kodak. And uh, you used to actually have to develop your photography. That word has no meaning anymore because Kodak is bankrupt. And anyone here can take a picture with their smartphone and broadcast it to an army of followers. Photography became digital. Same thing happened to music and content. We used to go to Blockbuster and rent analog films, and now we can distribute those digitally to any device instantly anywhere in the world. Same thing with mail. So don't have your head stuck in the sand. Money can be digital too. So to me, when people ask me what is Bitcoin, it is an open an invitation for anyone to openly participate in a new financial order. Um, and that's the mission of our company, to build an open uh, payments platform that anyone can participate in. So you often hear some pretty fantastic stories, um, and to me, I think they're exaggerated. Just like when rock and roll came out, a lot of people said it would pollute your mind and rock your teeth. New things tend to be scary for people. Um, they should be viewed with a degree of skepticism, but also um, I think if you start to investigate a little bit further, you can get to some really interesting answers. So um, whether you're in the first world or the third, uh, this innovation is probably the most important um, invention, in my opinion, since the history of the internet. We now have a censorship-resistant ability to send transactions anywhere in the world. So this is a big deal, and it's a lot more than just transactions of money. You could actually store proofs of shares to stocks, um, ownership over cars. You could have uh, assets of any type stored in this type of system and traded in a much more efficient way. So um, we have a little video to show you guys that we produced. This is actually a world's first, so hopefully this uh, starts and um, kind of captures how I feel about this. Volume. We don't have sound. So I will narrate. Um, the digital world is part of our DNA, and uh, this is how we used to send letters. This is how we used to communicate and shoot movies. 
but software has changed all of that. And um, it's brought the world closer together. Technology is something that's in our DNA now. And it's impacted almost every industry except banking and financial services. So these banks take hundreds of billions of dollars in fees from us. They build walled gardens, and they deliberately make it impossible for some people to participate. They continue to disappoint. So Bitcoin doesn't care where you come from, where you were born. Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can participate and send transactions instantly anywhere in the world on an open network. Um, the transactions are verified instantly, and uh, basically you can start to make those payments right away. So just for a few cents, you can teleport value anywhere on Earth. And uh, this isn't like making a faster racehorse. This is like inventing an entire new way of doing things. And it's going to take a little time for people, um, I think, to come around to it. But uh, we are looking for people to help us on this mission. And so um, my pitch today is that we are hiring a ton of folks. We need engineers specifically. We're based here in London. We take awesome care of our team. And uh, we'd love for people to come along with us. So um, that's my presentation. I'm sorry you weren't able to see our new commercial. Um, but maybe next time, and thanks again.